After a long wait, we finally have a Marvel movie that is experiencing great reviews from the critics and fans alike. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 packs a few surprises along the way, but one of the biggest surprises has to be the sudden appearance of Gamora as a member of the Ravengers. In this video, we will try to explore the origins of the Ravengers and their significance in the Marvel Universe. Beware of a few spoilers along the way. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Who are the Ravengers? The Ravengers are an interstellar crime syndicate that has multiple factions who indulge in everything from thievery to trafficking and piracy. One of the factions has its own cap and they all work independently of one another. The only thing that unites them is their common business. And the Ravengers also have a code of honor to be followed strictly. Although the exact terms of their code of honor are not known, it clearly states that kidnapping or trafficking children are against the code. It got Yandu, one of the most important members of the Ravengers, expelled. And even high-ranking members of the crime syndicate can be exiled and expelled for not abiding by the code. Only certain heroic actions can bring back exiled members, and Yandu was posthumously welcomed back into the organization after his invaluable help to the Guardians of the Galaxy while they fought Ego. The Ravagers can be best compared with pirates, as they lead similar lives as their unruly oceanic counterparts. Even though many members of the Ravagers are uneducated and silly, there are some who have prior education and training. Irrespective, they function as rowdy groups that need to be controlled by a powerful captain. The captains must possess respectable and feared combat skills to tame the Ravengers under their command, and the captains are often the smartest individuals in the group. If the captain proves to be inefficient, there might be an uprising to overthrow him from position of power. When were they first introduced? The Ravengers go back a long way in the Marvel lore because of these characters were created alongside the original Guardians of the Galaxy. When the first iteration of the Intergalactic Warrior Team emerged in comics in 1969 and ran through the 70s, the Ravengers were part of the story arc. In the MCU, however, the original Guardians team seems to have evolved into a larger group called the Ravengers. It is a common notion that the Guardians are initially one of the Ravengers, and slowly they're no Noble missions separated them from the herd. Even in the recent release, it is a bittersweet relationship between the Guardians of the Galaxy and the Ravengers. The latter help of the Guardians in return for some favors, but they also seem to have a soft spot for the Guardians. So what are you following us for? Because you're gonna listen to what I gotta say. I don't gotta listen to nothing. Who is Takar Ogord? The Sylvester Stallone cameo explained. This is easily one of the most exciting moments in the recent release of Guardians of the Galaxy movie, and Sylvester Stallone appears briefly as Takar to interact with the Guardians of one of the leaders of the Ravagers. While the movie does not do justice to the full extent of his character, you might expect to see more in the upcoming adventures. In the comics, he has a far greater role as one of the Ravager captains, who strictly abides by the Code of Conduct. He did not hesitate when he had to exile one of his friends for breaking the code, and he is regarded as one of the most legendary Ravager captains ever. How is Gamora part of the Ravagers? As every Marvel fan is aware, Gamora was taken in as a young girl by Thanos and trained to be an assassin. Eventually, she grew up to resent his destructive methods and went on to become a great enemy of her adoptive father. She spent years with the Guardians of the Galaxy, functioning as a hero, and she was finally killed by Thanos during the events of the Infinity War. This version of Gamora, however, is all thanks to the multiverse shenanigans in the Marvel Universe. This variant of Gamora got stuck in the original timeline after Thanos is defeated in Earth-616, even though she is from a different timeline. Thus, she has never worked with the Guardians and has no recollection of her romantic involvement with Peter. She worked with the Ravagers probably because of their moral code, even in crime, which seems to be the best way to define Gamora as a character. 
some of the other prominent members among the Ravengers. There are some other notable members in this space pirate group, and Yandu is one of the memorable ones. He initially used to work along Stakar and the Guardians of the Galaxy, but after violating the code of the Ravengers, he was exiled. Yandu did have a change of heart, and he kept Peter Quill safe from Ego. Unfortunately for him, Yandu regained his lost honor with his heroic death and redeemed himself. Played by Michael Roker, this character had an impactful role in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Interestingly, James Gunn ensured a subtle cameo where Yandu appears as a vision to Kraglin and guides him to use the whistle arrow effectively against the enemy. The recent release also offers a glimpse of Martin X Tanaga, played by Michael Rosenbaum, and this crystal-headed Ravager serves as the first officer to Stakar. Charlie 27 Ravager Clan was yet another distinguished faction and we expect to see a lot more of the Ravengers in upcoming movies in the MCU. Do let us know in the comments below about your thoughts on the Ravengers, and tell us what you think about these mysterious space pirates. We would love to hear your feedback about the recent Marvel release, and do share your thoughts with us. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone.